My brother, who is 25 years old, has a toxic ex-girlfriend, who is 26 years old. They are back together, which I know because he called me today to tell me that she will be over at our parents' house for the holidays next month. He knows I don't like her. There are multiple reasons why. One, my brother is a completely different person when he is with her and around her. For context, he is a soft boy, very well-mannered, lazy, but will do work around the house, kind and considerate. But he becomes irritable, bitter, inconsiderate, and honestly, an awful person when he is with her or around her. We did not speak for more than a year the last time she was around because who he became ruined our relationship and rapport. It took a lot to rebuild our relationship and it felt like that only happened because they broke up. It seemed like he broke out of a trance. This person he had become also affected our family dynamic significantly. I have always been the mediator in the family and it is extremely exhausting to tear myself apart to keep this family on good terms when things go south. Two, she has no consideration for the people around her, is messy, and does not care about it. I am a germaphobe. Three, she speaks to him and most people in a very demeaning manner. She puts him down quite a bit. She fights with him all the time, saying the most absurd things. Four, their relationship is one of the biggest reasons our family dynamic has been in shambles for years. They got into trouble in college and caused many issues with the authorities, resulting in both of them being suspended. We have immigrant parents. It is a very big deal. Five, long after they broke up, they met for their graduation about one and a half years ago and stayed together in the same hotel room for those couple of days. A few months later, she had an ectopic pregnancy and had to have emergency surgery to save her life. My brother flew down to her city to be with her and deal with the situation. Our parents do not know. I was kept in the loop the entire time and tried to help in any way we could. Number six, during infection 19, there was a massive lack of hospital beds in the city. We were all calling hospitals day in and day out to get a bed for my partner who was extremely unwell and needed to be admitted. His blood oxygen saturation levels kept rapidly dropping. One of her attempts succeeded and we were able to get a slot for an ambulance. I thanked her profusely for it and moved on to make arrangements for my partner to be moved to the hospital and then took care of the procedures. A few days later, I overheard a call between my brother who was staying with me at that time and a friend of his where he sounded defeated. Apparently, she was being snarky, fighting with him, and said things like, your sister is so ungrateful. She didn't thank me. She doesn't know how to show gratitude. They wouldn't have a bed if not for me. What else was I supposed to do? Shower her with praise when my partner was dying? I lost my partner not too long after. It has been over three years. I remember everything that happened during that phase in painful detail. And this is one of those things that boil my blood every time I think about it. He called me to tell me that she will be coming for the holidays as well because he knows how much I do not like her. I go home to my parents for peace and I won't have any this time. I will be super guarded and closed off in my own house. It is messing with my head quite a bit, but it hurts me more to see my brother back in a relationship that clearly affects him and his mental peace. I did tell my brother that I am drawing a very hard boundary. I will be civil, but will not interact with her unless absolutely necessary. They are in a long distance relationship, by the way. He is staying with our parents for a couple of months and she lives in a different city quite far away. They were broken up for a while and had a really complicated past together. And yes, I am aware he is equally responsible for the things that this relationship has affected. I just do not know how to approach this and deal with it. I need advice on how to handle this and be in the same space as her without making it too tense for the people around, namely my family. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, butt out. Stop being around her. Your brother is grown and has chosen time and time again to go back to this girl. He won't stop until he is ready or chooses to. Nothing you can say will change his choice. He has shown you that repeatedly. All you need to do is butt out. Don't talk to her at all. Don't be in places she is. Don't stay with your parents where she can surprise you or be there. Celebrate the holidays with your family on a different day 
without her there. Tell your family you won't be at events she is at, and assuming they all know why, they should be just fine and capable of celebrating with you as well. You need to choose yourself. Comment 2. I don't think there's much you can do other than stop mediating between him and your folks, and don't let him play on your sympathies to get you to intercede. If things start to get difficult with him and your parents, step quietly back and let it pass you by. This situation has too many players, him, her, you, both parents. Remove yourself psychologically as much as you can. Shake your head sympathetically and then say you're tired and leave the room to go take a nap or something. Now, for the update. Two weeks ago, I posted about how my brother's toxic ex was coming to stay with us for the holidays, and I was not looking forward to it. The situation has gotten worse, and I feel like I'm losing my brother. Yesterday was the last straw, and I need to vent. So, two weeks later, I was at home getting ready for the holidays. Our parents still live in the town we grew up in, and I still go home for the holidays. My brother was also coming from his city to be there. He called me a couple of days before to confirm when he was coming in and if the ex was going to be there. He sounded excited and happy to be coming home, which made me feel tense. I talked to my parents about the holiday plans, and they seemed completely unaware of what was going on with my brother and me. They didn't even know about the ex. They were excited for the holidays, and it made me feel bad that I was the only one not looking forward to spending time with him and her. I went home the day before my brother was coming in. When I got there, my parents were so happy to see me. They helped me decorate the house for the holidays. I overheard my mom talking about how happy my brother was now that he was back with his ex. It made me feel so crummy because I don't understand how they can see him so happy and not know that she is the one making him so happy. They always talk about how they want us to be happy, and if they only knew. My brother got to the house the next day before my parents and me. He had a huge suitcase with him filled with gifts for everyone, including his ex. When she walked in shortly after him, the whole atmosphere changed. She was so over-the-top cheerful, going up to everyone and hugging them. She was talking about how grateful she was to be able to spend the holidays with everyone, I could see my brother's demeanor change, and he was more animated and happy to be around her. We had dinner that night, and she made some snide remarks about my cooking. She said her family did it better. I tried to brush it off and stay civil, but it was hard. I just focused on talking to my parents and didn't engage with her. My brother jumped to her defense, though, saying she was just joking, which made me more frustrated. The next day, we all went to a local holiday market and she insisted on picking out gifts for everyone. She didn't even ask me what I wanted. At the market, she was loudly talking about her previous relationships. It made me uncomfortable, and I could tell my brother was eating it up. He thought it was funny. I confronted him about her behavior, and he brushed it off, saying she just has a big personality. I told him that her big personality was making me uncomfortable, and I didn't like that he was okay with it. Later that night, we had a game night and she monopolized the game. No one else got a chance to play. My brother was laughing along with her the whole time and it felt like we were the only ones not in on the joke. The next morning, my parents told me that she shared some embarrassing childhood stories about me with the family. My brother tried to defend her and said she was just trying to get to know everyone, but I was upset about it. He even accused me of being jealous, which surprised me. I couldn't believe he would say that. I asked him why he was okay with everything she was doing, and it led to a heated exchange. I finally just walked away from it all because I was so frustrated and felt unheard. I found a quiet corner of the house to take a break. I overheard her making fun of me to my parents, saying they must have done something wrong with me because I was so uptight. I went back to the living room, and my brother was in there laughing with her. It stung so much. The next day we took a family photo and she insisted on standing in the middle with my brother, completely ignoring my presence. On Christmas morning, she opened a gift from my brother, a piece of jewelry. I had actually suggested that he get it for her and it just made me feel even more frustrated. I decided to leave the family gathering for a little while and said I needed some fresh air. 
I went outside and overheard my brother defending her to my parents, which confirmed all my fears. When I went back in, the atmosphere felt heavier and I could feel the underlying conflict. My brother asked me to join them for a toast, but she made a snarky remark about me being a party pooper. I called her out on it and it led to an explosive confrontation. She threatened to cut off contact with my brother and he looked so torn. It made me feel even more frustrated because I just wanted him to see her for who she is. The family dinner ended with a tense silence as she stormed out, taking my brother with her. Edit. After she left, my brother and I had an emotional talk. He acknowledged her flaws, but felt she genuinely loved him. I suggested counseling for him and he agreed. Am I the idiot for kicking out my friend after finding out she was sneaking around with another man while living in my house? My partner, female, 39, and I, female, 39, purchased our house just over two years ago. Shortly after we moved in, a friend, female, 44, contacted us to check if she could stay for a short period of time as she had moved overseas but needed to come back for a short visit for some freelance work that she does. Since we have a guest bedroom, we saw no issue and agreed. Since then, she has come back to stay with us on and off for a few weeks at a time over the last couple of years while she had some freelance jobs booked in. Over that time, she slowly opened up about her marriage and the problems that she was experiencing. She had been considering divorce and relocating back to our city from overseas. When we heard the extent of the emotional abuse that she was enduring in this relationship, my partner and I were quite shocked and encouraging of her to take care of herself and do what is best for her. She doesn't have any other family living here, so we offered her our guest bedroom if she needed time to get herself sorted out and back on her feet. It was a mistake on our part that we never set a timeline on this offer. She has been going back and forth between our house and her parents' home overseas for the last year, with her stays with us changing from weeks to months at a time. This time around, she has been here for over three months, and my partner and I are starting to really feel the strain of not having our own space anymore. She currently doesn't have an end date for when she will be leaving. On top of this, we recently found out that our in vitro fertilization cycle was successful and I am pregnant, which we are absolutely thrilled about. But we really feel we need this time to nest and get the house ready for the baby. We are planning to turn our guest bedroom into the baby's room, so we need this space back and time to decorate it. We were hoping that when we announced my pregnancy to our friend, she would understand that we would need our space and the bedroom back again, but it doesn't seem to have registered with her. We have another spare room, which we use as an office, so we are not sure if she just assumes we will put her there. But even beyond the space issue, we need time alone as a family to prepare and time after the baby arrives to bond. She is in the process of re-establishing her business here and we are not sure of her financial situation. She has always worked freelance and had somewhat of a free-spirited approach to life. As far as we know, she hasn't made any move to find her own place, and I am not sure if she can afford to. She has been living with us for free, which is fine. We never expected any money. We just wanted to help. We ultimately will need to have her moved out in the next month to month and a half to give ourselves time to prepare for the baby but we are not sure how to approach this without a difficult or awkward conversation. If we had an end date for her leaving this time, I wanted to let her know that we would be dismantling the guest bedroom so she is aware before she leaves, in a polite way. But since we don't have an end date, this is not really an option. I am looking for advice on how to approach this. We do love our friend and want the best for her, but we also need to take care of ourselves too and the little life we are bringing into the world. My partner and I can feel ourselves becoming more short-tempered and resentful toward her, and we really don't want to lose this friendship because she is ultimately a really nice person, but we need our space. I am currently pregnant and have a friend staying indefinitely in my guest bedroom. I need the bedroom back and my friend to move out so I can prepare for the baby. I am unsure how to approach this with my friend. Now for an update, huge thanks to all the people who offered their advice on this post. 
I had a sit-down conversation with my friend and explained the situation, that we are happy we have been able to help, but with our situation changing, we will need the space back and time to prepare. She actually didn't seem that surprised and said that she totally understands. We've agreed on an end date and discussed her options to get herself sorted out. Thanks for the push on sorting this out, folks. Huge relief. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, we ultimately will need to have her moved out in the next month to month and a half to give ourselves time to prepare for the baby. But we are not sure how to approach this without a difficult or awkward conversation. I think you should be focusing on your needs here rather than your wants. And doing this without any kind of difficult conversation is a want and not a very realistic one. You're facing a firm deadline here, and it's clear that dropping vague hints isn't going to do the trick. You've already let this go on for far too long. Leaving her with only a month or so is not a lot of time in general, let alone for someone in a complicated situation. You owe it to her and yourselves to break the news to her as soon as possible, regardless of whether it's an awkward conversation. Comment two. Just because you set the stage for her to consider your spare bedroom constantly open to her doesn't mean you need to feel badly about walking it back. We told you recently about our good pregnancy news. With that coming up, we'll need our whole home, including the bedroom you've been using, and won't be able to host you any longer. Don't bring up the past. Don't bring up your previous generosity or all that. This is about the future, not the past. How she gets her life in order so as to not be dependent on her friend is up to her. Don't get sucked into it. Don't feel like you owe her more help. Now for the update. It's been six days since my friend agreed to move out by the end of the month. My partner and I have started packing up the guest room to prepare for the nursery. I really thought we were on the path to a peaceful resolution and getting our home back in order. At first, everything was going great. My friend seemed to be making progress, frequently looking at apartments online. She even asked for recommendations, which we happily provided. But then on the third day, things started to get weird. I noticed my friend receiving late night calls. I mean really late, like 2 a.m. late. The calls became more frequent, often lasting hours. I could hear her giggling and stuff. My curiosity was definitely piqued. Then she began spending more time away from the house claiming she was meeting with a support group. I thought it was a little odd that she had to go out so much for a support group, but whatever. It was her life. Still, I couldn't shake this feeling that something was off. My gut was telling me something, and I usually trust my gut. One evening, I spotted her at the local diner with a man, a man I didn't recognize from any of our previous gatherings. She looked super animated during their conversation, smiling and laughing like a little kid at Christmas. I mentioned this to my partner, who found it odd, but didn't want to jump to conclusions. I said, yeah, neither do I, but something is definitely up. A few days later, I overheard my friend talking on the phone in the living room. She was discussing plans for next weekend and sounded so excited. I couldn't resist asking her casually what her plans were for the upcoming weekend. She hesitated and then mentioned a quick trip to visit a relative I found this suspicious since it was never mentioned before. She was all excited about visiting a relative all of a sudden. One day at dinner, I casually mentioned her support group to my sister. My sister, who had moved recently, suddenly recalled seeing my friend at a local bar a few nights prior. She described my friend being very close to a man who looked quite familiar. My heart sank. I decided I needed to confirm what I heard, so I visited the bar with my partner. We went on a Saturday night, hoping to catch a glimpse of her. The bar was packed and it took time to spot my friend, but we finally did. She was sitting at the bar, clearly enjoying herself with the same man from the diner. I snapped a discreet photo to have proof of what I saw. I mean, if I was going to confront her about this, I needed something. The confrontation happened when my friend returned home late that night. I showed her the photo and asked for an explanation. She looked shocked and tried to deny everything. Her first words were, this is so not what you think it is. Then she claimed it was all innocent and that the man was just a friend. But then she dropped the truth. 
She revealed she had actually been seeing this man for weeks. I was furious. I confronted the man on social media, sending him a direct message. He responded, surprised, claiming he didn't know about my friend's living situation. I told him to stay away from her and our home. I was done with this drama. The final twist came when my friend decided to move out early after the confrontation. She packed her stuff and left the next day. I didn't even get a chance to say goodbye. So yeah, that's the tea. It's been a crazy ride, but my partner and I are ready for our new baby. Thank you for reading. Edit, it's been a while since my last update. My friend moved out two weeks early, which was honestly a relief. We haven't spoken since, but I did see her at a coffee shop a few days ago. We made eye contact, but I just smiled and kept walking. The man she was seeing was at the bar last weekend. My sister and I had a great time. My partner and I are doing great, preparing for our baby and excited about the future. Thanks for all the advice. Am I the idiot for feeling like my past trauma is destroying my partner's mental health? I'm a 31-year-old female and my partner, David, is a 32-year-old male. We've been together for 14 years. I want to share some of my story in hopes that someone can help me understand what's happening with him and how I can support him better. I come from a challenging background filled with pain and trauma. My family has a history of crime and violence, and my mother battles bipolar disorder. Growing up, life was incredibly hard, and I often found myself in unsafe situations. I remember running away at 16, thinking I could escape my problems, but I made choices that only led to more unfortunate events, as I knew nothing about what was normal. I've always felt like a burden, and at times, I believe I'm a curse, unable to bring joy to anyone, especially David. When I met David, I was so lost that even he called me feral, as I acted impulsively and guarded myself, and I really didn't behave well. I felt like a black hole, incapable of doing anything good. David has been my support system. He basically raised me, cherished me, loved me, cared for me, kept me safe, and believed in me. He introduced me to emotions I had never fully experienced. It took years for me to give back those feelings, but even then, my emotions felt shallow compared to what David offered. My PTSD affected our intimate life as well, and I struggled to communicate that to him. However, he had already guessed what had happened to me, so David was patient, never angry, and he seemed to understand without saying anything. He truly was my light and kept me alive. When he saw potential in my talents, he invested his savings, taking a gamble that paid off. Now, I'm in a good position professionally, thanks to David. He is always so proud of everything I do and gives me everything without asking. I often wonder what David saw in me. He continuously reassures me by saying he always recognized my potential and beauty. I sometimes feel like I owe him everything, but he insists that he merely gave me a chance to be the person he always knew I could be. I just needed guidance. That sounds unfair, and I never know how to give back or respond. Recently, though, things have taken a turn. For over a year, I've seen my lovable David struggling, and it breaks my heart. He's seeking professional help, but it seems like he's withering away, and I can feel it. I can't help but think that I'm dragging him down, or that I've burned him out completely. I've cut ties with my toxic and dangerous family, but their influence seems to linger and still creep into our lives. Even though we have a lovely home, the weight of my past continues to haunt us. I've tried so hard to create a happy life for us, but I feel like I'm failing to keep David happy. He reassures me that his struggles aren't because of me, that he is just tired and he will be there for me soon. I don't really believe him and I want to be there for him now. What can I do to really support him right now? I want to understand what he needs from me as he is not giving me an answer especially coming from a man's perspective. I've even suggested that he could leave me for someone who could make him happier, feeling as though I have nothing to offer but my own misery. Now I see how wrong that was. I just multiplied his pain instead of giving an option out. I'm still learning to give love, and I'm lacking in making great memories as I just don't know how. Help me so that I can make a happy life for David, that he can smile when he wakes up and sleeps well with good dreams. I want to be a good wife. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Even if it is hard to believe, 
things aren't my fault. Honestly, you should be working on this in therapy if you're not already. I totally agree with what's said here though. It's not your fault, nor is it your responsibility to make sure he's happy all of the time. It is not normal for anyone to be happy 100% of the time. Humans feel a variety of emotions throughout every single day. Comment two, I haven't found a therapist for me yet. Unfortunately, we have a free healthcare system here and the wait list can be long, but the therapists who are highly talented for my case aren't willing to get me in. One of the reasons is that I have memory loss on some events and most of them are hesitant to do treatment. I don't know the reason why, so I'm still waiting. Now for the update. A few weeks ago, I decided to be a better partner to my husband, David. I was determined to support him more. Things have been rocky and he has been in a rough place for a while. He is in therapy, but it seems like things just get worse before they get better. I thought, you know what? Let's have a birthday party. His birthday was coming up and I thought this would be a good opportunity for him to be around people that love him. Being around our family makes him happy and I know it would lift his spirits. So I planned a small birthday celebration for him at our home. I invited our close family members. I just wanted a supportive atmosphere for David and our family is always so good at that. I had balloons and a cake and everything. I was so excited. When everyone arrived, David seemed to appreciate the effort, but he was quiet. He just stayed distant throughout the whole thing. I tried to engage him in conversation, but he was just in his own world. We had dinner, and that was when things got awkward. My mom brought up the topic of kids. Ugh, this is a conversation that I have tried to have with David many times, but he always shuts me down. My younger sister, Anna, joked about when David and I were going to have kids. It was all in good fun, but my heart just dropped because I could see David's face. He shifted in his seat and avoided eye contact. I tried to lighten the mood a little. I suggested that maybe we could adopt a dog instead, just to make a joke out of it and to get the focus off of the kid's topic. David forced a laugh, but I could tell he wasn't engaged. After dinner, the guests left, and he retreated to the living room. I thought maybe we could talk about the evening, but he just brushed me off. I was frustrated, but I decided to give him space and clean up alone. While I was washing the dishes, I overheard him on the phone with someone. I got curious, so I finished quickly and walked toward the living room. I caught snippets of the conversation, and it sounded like he was discussing his struggles. He was talking about feeling overwhelmed. I wanted to know more, but I didn't want to interrupt. After the call, I brought it up and I asked him if he wanted to talk about it. He just dismissed me and said he was fine and didn't want to discuss it. Ugh. I was just trying to be there for him. A few days later, I found a receipt for a therapy session in his jacket pocket. This is what I mean about him being distant. He doesn't tell me anything about his sessions. I don't know if that's a confidentiality thing or if he just doesn't want to share what's bothering him, but it makes things hard between us. During a family dinner at my parents' house, the topic of mental health came up. My dad shared his own experiences with therapy, and that led to a discussion about it. David listened quietly the whole time. I could see him getting uncomfortable, though. After dinner, he suddenly wanted to leave. He said he was tired. I tried to persuade him to stay because I thought maybe he would open up a little, but he insisted on going home. Once we were home, I confronted him about his discomfort during dinner, and he snapped at me. He said he didn't want to talk about his issues in front of others. He stormed off to the bedroom, and I was left feeling so isolated. The next day, I found a message on his phone from an old friend. The friend mentioned meeting up and talked about their difficult times. This made me uneasy. I confronted David about it. He became defensive, saying I was overreacting and didn't understand. I stood my ground and insisted we needed to be open with each other. Finally, he agreed to sit down and talk, but it felt forced. As we talked, David revealed he had been considering a big life change. He mentioned wanting to move to a new city for a fresh start. We ended the conversation without a resolution, both feeling the weight of uncertainty. Edit. David and I have been together for 14 years. He has always been my support, even when I felt unworthy. 
His recent struggles led us to an uncomfortable conversation about a possible move to a new city for a fresh start. No decision has been made. We are still navigating this. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.